All right, everyone. It's one o'clock on a Wednesday. You know where you're at. You're at the Intero Now Show. We do this every uh, other Wednesday now at one o'clock. Um, I've got a little bit of housekeeping. We never use the chat except to tell you that we're about to get started. And if you have a question, please use the Q&A uh, section within Zoom. And as I do every other Wednesday, I'm here with our co-founder and CEO, Brian Crane. So I'm gonna let Brian take it away. Take it away, Brian. Uh, hey, Derek, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, Derek, I'm pressing on the video button and it's telling me uh, that I'm not allowed to use the video because the host has stopped it. Oh. Uh, if you can unvideo me, I, you know, I did my hair for the show today and I wanted to make sure everybody uh, took a look at that. And I, I even took a shower this morning. So I was kind of hoping to All right. um, get a full view. Is there anything different? Uh, see if you can do it now, Brian. See if you can change. Let me uh, give that a whirl. There we go. Look at that. Yes. Uh, modern technology at its very, very best. Um, Derek, thank you for for hosting. We've got a great show today. Uh, I am uh, very excited to uh, about our special guests. They're going to focus on tax and estate planning and uh, considerations for your buyers and sellers. You know, um, today's talk is, is really a, a great piece of the future of what we're going to do at Intero. And what we're really doing at Intero is, is partnering with quality providers and, and adding value to your transaction by, by these partnerships. Um, real estate is so much more complex than it was uh, in the old days. And, um, and by partnering, we can improve the experience that your clients get. And uh, so I'm, I'm really excited about the strategic direction of our company. We've always had great partners in, in Orange Coast Title and Prosperity Home Mortgage, and I'm I'm really excited that Summitry is is one of these uh, is one of these partners as well. Uh, so with regard to the agenda, I believe that uh, that our uh, Prosperity people had a separate meeting they had to get to, and Daniel Dietrich was going to have a little uh, something to say. And if I'm correct, then Daniel, you pop on and and say what you're going to say. I, I'm here, Brian. Thanks. Uh... Thanks so much for having me. I'm not sure if I can start my video. I'm going to try, but yeah, it's not going to let me, but that's okay. Contact information is up there. What I wanted to share with you guys really uh, briefly was uh, in the month of October, we do have our OCT PPE kits uh, to keep our realtors and our buyers and sellers compliant uh, for showings by appointment uh, for all your new open escrows uh, for this uh, month of October. Uh, if you have questions about it, please reach out to your Orange Coast title rep and we'd be happy uh, to get one together for you and we appreciate you using OCT. Uh, a farming tip, uh, take a look at condos. You know, condo uh, and townhouses have been very active markets. And for those of you who are kind of looking at their business plan going into 2021, I would encourage you to talk to your OCT rep about where different condo markets are really active. That's all I really had to say, Brian. So I'm gonna pass it back over to you, but uh, thank you as always for having Orange Coast as part of the program. Yeah, you bet, Daniel. Hey, what's in the PPP kit or the PPE kit? Okay, so the PPE kit is a nice little orange bag. Uh, I can actually share it if, if you're allowed to share. Let's see here. I'm yeah, trying it. it looks like I can share it here uh, really quickly. Um, so what's in it, um, it kind of looks like this. It has uh, a mask, gloves, hand sanitizer, as well as wipes. It comes with our five different tent cards to protect people in a showing by appointment, all zipped up in this cute little Orange Coast bag. So something to look forward to for your new uh, listings in the month of October. That's awesome, Dar uh, Daniel, thank you. I mean, who couldn't use an extra mask right now? Um, masks are like uh, eyeglasses now. I, I put a mask kind of everywhere that I think I might need one. And uh, then, I, then I typically have one. So if anybody's an eyeglass wearer, they understand my dilemma. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm also excited to share, we've got uh, Robert Cruz on today and he's gonna do some statistics and give us the latest and greatest of uh, what happened last month in the market. Uh, September was a big, big month and, 
and I know he's got some great content to share as well. So please hold on. And, uh, and we've also got a special guest, American Home Shield, coming up as well. But uh, before I get into that, I want to introduce our our main speakers here today. Uh, this is a quote from the director at Summitry, Alex Katz. Uh, one's wealth is simply defined as the choices one has in life. I love that, that quote because it's exactly what we're talking about here uh, with, with introducing Summitry and your choice to introduce Summitry to your transaction and your client so that they can make a good choice for themselves moving forward in the transaction. It's really a super professional methodology of, of making sure your clients are, are not only uh, asking the right questions, but getting the right information to make, uh, to make great decisions for their family. And that's what we're in the business to do. So Alex is uh, on and his, uh, his colleague Adam will be here as well. And uh, the two of them are going to share <clears throat> more detail about, uh, about trusts and estates around real estate sales. So gentlemen, you're up. Brian, thank you. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Alex. Great, to, great to not great to only hear your voice, but I, I I would love to see a video too. No, me too. And and Brian, I did my hair today also, so I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> it took three and a half seconds for me to do yeah. my hair, but but it happened. <laughs> so hopefully, uh, Derek will uh, will get our our video sorted out here momentarily. But I I, uh, I apologize, guys. I don't know what's going on. It's it's got you all blacked out, and I can't change anything for some reason all right well at least you got a good picture of adam so you can see what he looks like and you guys have seen me enough times to know what i look like so um <laughs> I, you know speaking of which I, I would just say a couple of things before i turn it over to adam uh the first is that the the partnership between intero and Summitry just continues to to gain momentum and and i really appreciate all of the uh realtors out there who have jumped into the fray I think we had 34 Intero clients sent our way in the third quarter of 2020, which was just about double the second quarter. So uh, we continue the, to have great trajectory, great, great progress. And I can say without a doubt, because I spoke to all 34 of those clients, that we, we delivered some form of value and some form of clarity in helping them with this major financial decision that they're considering in every single one of those cases. So uh, feels great and, and really excited about where we're headed with this partnership. Um, for those of you who don't know about the Summitry partnership, I thought I would do the 30 second version, which is simply to say that the, a, a real estate decision in the Bay Area is one of the most consequential financial decisions someone makes in the course of their lifetime. And to do it back of the envelope, just kind of thinking very tactically in terms of what's my mortgage payment going to be, how much are my property taxes going to be. It, to us, that seems like a very small piece of the puzzle. So the, the work that we're doing with the Intero clients is to contextualize that decision in a, in a much bigger picture in the, the course of years or decades into the future and, and in the structure of a, a, a well-constructed financial plan. And that just allows clients to be so much more settled and grounded in their decision and move forward with a different degree of confidence. Um, so I just wanted to remind those of you who have not uh, worked with us yet that that really is at its core what we're out to accomplish. Uh, the other thing hey, that I would Alex, say, yeah, go I'm for it, Brian. Sorry to interrupt you, but I, I appreciate you sharing that because I think it helps everybody on the call to to really hear it a couple of different ways and and, you know, what we're trying to do is improve uh, the overall experience that our clients get. And, um, and, and this, the subject matter of today's show, uh, my goal with this is to make sure that when that you guys teach everybody uh, to listen, what to listen for so that they don't have to be experts in this. They just have to listen for the right things and then make this referral so that you, their clients get this information and get, get a good understanding of, of what's going on. So uh, that's the, that's a key piece of this is just, you know, it's an, it's an awareness factor. When you hear of a client that's struggling with one thing or another, I, I want the, the flag to go up the pole and, and our agent to say, Hey, I have a partner in the business here that can help clarify this potentially. So that, that's, that's, that's really the, the goal here. That's perfect, Brian. And, and, you know, very intentionally in these conversations, 
we're telling stories that the last time I was on the now call, it was three stories of, you know, the inherited property and the move up buyer. And we really are trying to paint a picture so that it's very easy to recognize those scenarios and then just bring in the team. Uh, and today is no different. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased because uh, to, to this point, really, I think most of, of the Intero interactions have been with me. And, and I said on the last call, Summitry is now 37 employees and we've got a team of a dozen uh, financial advisors. So I'm delighted to bring Adam to the table today. Um, Adam has been with Summitry for about two years, uh, has been in the industry a lot longer than that. He is a, a certified financial planner. Oh, we can see Adam now. Look at this. Let's see if I can share mine. Oh, look at this. There well we done, go. Derek. Well done. Got to figure it figured we, out, guys. We overcame technology. Uh, so, um, so Adam is, um, again, a certified financial planner, works with about 75 of our high net worth clients. But really, when, when Brian and I started talking about the topic for today's conversation, which is about tax implications and estate planning implications around real estate decisions, Adam was a no-brainer. Uh, not only is he a, a very talented storyteller and can bring to life the work that we've done for for many of our clients, but um, I say this only partly jokingly that Adam's the kind of guy who reads tax law on the weekends because he just finds it interesting. So uh, I know I don't have that in common with Adam, but it's a great guy to have on the team. So, so with that said, um, Adam, why don't I turn it over to you and we'll hop right into the tax and estate content. Thanks, Alex, and I, I certainly hope I, uh, I live up to that introduction, but, uh, and clearly we did not coordinate on which Summitry background we were going to use, uh, use for the call today, but uh, Alex, thank you for the introduction, and thank you, Brian, Derek, thank you everyone for having us on the call today. As Alex said, kind of gave a quick background on, my, on me, so I won't go into that. What I really wanted to do today, any presentation or any conversation that centers around tax and estate planning, is not naturally the most engaging and exciting topic. So the goal for today is let's make it as engaging as possible. I'm gonna talk in the context of some stories. And Brian, I think you brought up the really important point of how can we help you as agents identify as you're working with clients, the sort of clients that make sense that we can help with. And then most importantly with each of these client situations, let's cap it off with how is this gonna help you as an agent, whether it's you know, uh, identifying new clients or just clients. I, I'm calling this as Alex and I were preparing. I said, you know, all the three things we're going to share today are clients who are having difficulty making decisions, kind of a crisis of confidence period. And I'm sure everyone has dealt with this at least several times, but uh, a client who just can't get across the finish line, whether they're nervous, whether they're stressed out, they don't know how to make the decision. Uh, so we're going to walk you through kind of three of the people that we can really help make that decision. And then again, walking through how that might help your business and uh, just lead to getting some of those clients over the finish line. So again, thank you for having us. And I uh, wanted to start off today just kind of with a case study. And, and one of the reasons I thought this would be an excellent one is this is actually uh, an interior client that was, uh, that was referred to us. Alex and I are going to be meeting with uh, in the next few days, obviously names, uh, some of the details changed for privacy reasons, but uh, just given that this is a client we're already working with, Lintura, I thought it was a perfect example. Um, so Justpreet and Tessneen are 36 and 38, uh, and Justpreet works for a company that has recently gone public. Uh, this year, especially, there's been a lot of IPOs or SPACs or mergers, what have you, and so there's a lot of that sudden wealth coming in, options that are vesting, I mean, again, that's one of the things you're hearing about with anybody that's been part of a public company that's kind of going public is, again, equity is going to be a huge part of that conversation. So anyone that has that as part of their assets, you'll hear letters like ESPP, RSU, any of those sort of acronyms, that's what we deal with. And that's really where they're looking to generally unlock liquidity for making a real estate purchase. And so uh, these clients, Jess Breed and Tessneem, that we're going to be meeting with, They've got the plan that they're considering selling their home in San Jose, but they really want to move to Spain for a while, take their kids with them. But now they're faced with the tough decision of, do we sell in California? Do we rent in California? And then all of a sudden, company goes public. And then a lot of the wealth is all of a sudden, 80% of their net worth is 
oh my gosh, 80% is in one stock. So what they need to do is they don't even know where to start. And part of it, they didn't even understand if they sold their home, they'd have a, a sale exclusion on it. So those sorts of things that probably think about as basic things, they really, they've got all the assets. It's really just getting everything into one place. So a, a prospective client like this, again, they're going to be kind of the client that's a little discombobulated. You probably know they work in tech. They might have worked for a company that just went public or was acquired. And what they really need help with is getting everything into place. And how the heck do I deal with 80% of my assets being in one company, especially when I'm thinking about, you know, moving to another country? And what are the implications of those sorts of things? And so what we're going to be discussing with them are a few things. One is coming up with a strategic selling plan. You're going to find with a lot of these tech workers, especially in like the 30 to 45 range, although we've seen some as young as late 20s uh, recently, I think with all the, uh, all the IPOs, but what they're really going to be, they're going to be a little bit discombobulated. They've got all the assets. They might talk about something like company having recently gone public, an acquisition, something of that nature. But these are going to be your more discombobulated clients. And the way we're really going to help them is, A, come up with a selling plan, right? They've got all the stock that they've received over time. They have no earthly idea what they're going to do with it, what the implications are. So step one is helping them understand what the tax implications are and coming up with a strategy. And it's, you know, not quite as simple as sell everything that is at the lowest gain. There's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, you know, people that are worried about the alternative minimum tax with stock options, we can get into the details of it, but it really takes a nuanced understanding of all of their compensation, usually all of their equity compensation to come up with that sell plan. And that's really a lot of people's first step is they have no idea how to tax efficiently move out of a position and generate that cash for the down payment that's right now in some recently, you know, public company. And so what we're going to help them do is a understand the tax implications of selling, but also too, what happens if they rent and they move out of the country? Is there a state plan in order? A lot of times when I'm speaking with these clients, again, in this kind of age range of just breed and test name, I hear I've drafted an estate plan or I've thought about it. Someone told me I should do it, but I've never really gotten around to it. And they're really getting the point where everything, estate tax needs to be lined up in conjunction and that they understand what something like moving to a foreign country is going to do to their estate and tax planning. And so again, what we were, what we'll actually be presenting to them and hopefully moving forward with is a strategic selling plan where we're maximizing the, the gains losses that we're able to take. We're helping them make a decision about, hey, if you don't owe taxes on your home, does that kind of push you forward to being able to make the decision versus sell versus hold? What are the cap rates? I don't have to tell anyone, but it's not necessarily going to be a huge cash flow property for them. So does it make sense to extract their equity or do they actually need that cash flow? That's one of their concerns is when they're moving abroad, are we going to be able to manage that cash flow? And so what we're going to help them do is move out over time and generate what they're going to need to be able to a sell one property. And then again, they want to purchase what I would consider to be a beautiful property in Spain. And so we want to make sure that we're able to tap that equity for them and make it happen. So what is kind of going back to the agent side of things? What is the benefit of this? These are clients who obviously have the assets, you know, a company that went public six months ago and is up a hundred percent. So obviously those assets have generated a lot of wealth. These are clients who are not going to get across the finish line and making a decision unless they understand exactly where things are going to go. And so what we're helping them do is by understanding the impact, it's not a matter of not having the assets. Can't think of a single client in this situation who doesn't have the money. It's that they don't have the confidence in the decision that we're making. And so what we're doing to partner with you as an agent is to give them that confidence to say, you know what, we can make the sale by our dream house in Spain and maybe we move back, but they understand what it's going to be and frankly, just getting them the basics of what is, what is it, you know, what does it mean to have this transaction is hopefully going to help them get across the line in order to make that decision. So again, the, the bottom line for you as an agent, these are going to be the clients that are a little bit more disoriented. They maybe don't have anything together. And really what's going to get them across the finish line is having a, a good understanding of where they are and a solid foundation, a proper estate plan. You don't want to be traveling abroad without a good estate plan. And so all those sorts of things, getting those into place.
All right, that I think covers kind of our, we'll call it the younger, we're going chronologically here in terms of age. And so next couple I wanted to bring to you, and again, these are all real clients, obviously some details have been changed for privacy reasons. Um, so next client I wanted to talk about, John and Suki, 64 and 65, they're really in that retirement stage. They've accumulated assets. They bought their primary residence in Los Altos a long time ago. They've done exceptionally well on that property. And they know that they want to be closer to their kids who live in Washington, spend time with their grandkids, build the dream house, the whole retirement dream, if you will. But again, one of the things that's paralyzing when making those decisions is, do I buy, do I sell, and what are the implications, right? So they knew that they possibly wanted to move to Washington, but again, it's the same question. We've got this highly appreciated property in Los Altos. Can we even bite the tax bullet? Do we understand what it is? And do we understand what happens if we keep the property moving to Washington? So a big, and again, I, I'm, I'm gonna go at a high level if anybody has any more detailed questions, but I find clients don't often think about the fact that there are two levels of taxes, right? There's federal and state, and clients who move states aren't thinking about well, how will California, a property in California, be taxed if I move to Washington? And so those sorts of considerations, once clients are able to understand what their cash flow looks like, the taxability of their income, taxability of a sale, again, they're more confident making that decision. And they're able to get over the hump where they say, you know what, I can bite a tax bullet because I know it's not going to be efficient for me to own this property necessarily in Washington. And right now, they, they literally probably three months ago finished building their dream home in Washington. It's unfortunate they can't see their, their grandkids and kids as often as they want right now. But really for them, it was they know what they don't know. And that was the real barrier in overcoming this opposition. So this type of client is going to be in the retirement stage. They're going to be talking about spending more time with kids. It might not be kids. You know, everybody's got their own preference. It might be that beach property that they've always wanted to move to. Uh, but oftentimes it's going to be kids, grandkids, something of that nature. And what's really going to hold them off is they've got this very highly appreciated home. They've had it for a while and they don't know what to do with it. They're not comfortable taking the tax bite. And where we come in is helping them say, hey, have you thought about all these different factors? Is it actually going to be tax efficient to own this? And does it make sense to take a tax bite and just make the sale because you know you can fund all the things that are important to you? And you're not going to be surprised when you move because that's the worst thing. So when a client moves or they've already moved and then having to retroactively go back and explain some things on the estate tax side, uh, something that again, clients don't often think about are there are states with estate taxes. And so, you know, people often think about the federal estate tax exemption. Obviously we watched it go higher over the last several years or decades, if you will. A lot of states have a lower very much lower exemption for estate taxes, often in, let's say, the one to $3 million range. So a, a lot of times clients who live in California who think they would never qualify for any sort of estate or inheritance tax move to another state and find that it hasn't changed federally, but they may be subject to state estate taxes. And again, so that involves another layer of complexity in terms of estate planning. Again, it may involve setting up trusts in multiple states, if clients own property within LLCs, you've got to make sure it's recognized within the state. Some of this you may be aware of, um, but I think it's important because clients aren't often thinking about these sorts of things. They've gotten very used to living in one state and exactly what that's like. Uh, you should have seen the client's face when I told them that there was a state estate tax if he moved to Washington and that it was going to involve some more planning. But again, we were able to plan proactively. And I think that's the big thing is when clients are making those big moves, they need to have that confidence to be able to make those decisions. And they're not going to be able to do it unless they have a full understanding. And again, these clients are often in the know what you don't know stage. They know that there's complexity. They know that they need to understand their cash flow. But frankly, they have no idea where to start. So again, partnering with you as the agent, that's what's going to get that sale over the line. That transaction is going to be able to move from, I'm not sure if I can do this, but I know I want to, to yes, I can handle this. And frankly, a lot of times it's being okay with paying a little bit in taxes. That's not how it happens all the time, but it's really just understanding to people, you're going to be okay. Make this decision, spend time with your grandkids. It's okay to let go of this property. Owning property in Los Altos has done very well for you and it's okay to pay a little bit in taxes, but it's really getting people to that level of 
of confidence. And that's where we can help you as an agent be able to do Hey, that. Adam, um, that's, Ryan. yeah, great, great information. And I think our realtors on the call here can understand what you're saying. If, if we all think about when we, when we meet a, a seller who hasn't bought or sold a home in many, many years, um, they know they need help. That's why they call a realtor, right? Exactly. And you're describing is a whole nother set of, of circumstances that again, they know they need help. So this is why we're introducing Summitry. So I, I'm just trying to continue to tie this together so everyone understands. And, and that was a perfect way to say it, you know, because we see our clients all the time, they call us and they thank us so much for helping them through this maze called selling your house. And what you're trying to do and say is there's this whole other complex piece about how this transaction affects your, your life, your, your, uh, your wealth, basically, uh, post close. So um, great stuff, Al or, uh, Adam. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, Brian. I, I really think that's an excellent point is the reason. And I think that's the, the key element is they're calling an inferior agent because they know they need help. Right. They're not going to start that dialogue just as a, hey, how's it going? No, I'm just calling real estate offices. Right. They're calling with some intention. And obviously some clients, it's it's an easy. They're ready to go. They're ready to make the decision. As you said, these are especially going to be helpful for the clients that maybe it's difficult. Maybe they're having trouble making the decision. It's a tumultuous time or again, running into people where maybe they haven't even expressed that interest yet. They're part of your pipeline. They're part of your longer term people that you want to stay in contact with. This is a way to help them make that decision and be able to close that deal that's maybe been hanging out there, but but hasn't quite gotten across the finish line yet. Great. Hey, Adam, we've got a couple of questions, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, Please. Asking. Yeah, happy to answer them. Pretty simple ones. Uh, the first one is from Tom Nevin. What is the difference between an inheritance tax and an estate tax? Oh, that's a good one. I love that. So, And I was going to say that that is the, the nuanced detail, right? Is there's two types of taxes that states will levy as an estate tax and an inheritance tax. Uh, great, great question, Tom. Estate tax is a tax levied to the estate itself, right? So the estate's going to file its final tax. You know, you're going to file the several tax returns that are involved. One is going to be the individual's income tax return, the estate tax return, and the estate itself will pay the tax. An inheritance tax is something that's actually levied on the beneficiary. And so that's gonna be kind of at the next step in the process. So functionally, because I think that might be more of the question, is it ends up working very similar insofar as the assets are being taxed in the process of being passed from the decedent to the beneficiary. It's really where is it being taxed and what are the applicable tax rates and who is it affecting? So. It's, it's functionally the same process, right? Before the client ever is able to, or the decedent's ever able to pass on their assets, there's a tax being levied. Uh, the estate tax is again, payable directly by the estate. Inheritance is more, think of it as a tax on the beneficiary itself on the received property. Awesome, thanks Adam. Uh, and then Nazio was asking, obviously if we can get your information out to the people, we'll send that out after uh, the show uh, later today. Uh, Michael Teresa or T Tesaro, is asking, it appears that Prop 19 will pass and have you started to look into how it might advise, how you might advise clients on moving or not moving should this proposition pass? It's a great question. I haven't gotten too many client questions about it yet. Uh, what I've been thinking about and we've just kind of been talking about with our advisory team is I don't think a lot of people will be making by, and this is totally, I'm going into my own personal opinion here. I don't know if people will be making as many buy sell decisions based on Prop 19. I think it will become more of a topic of conversation. What I'm really hearing from clients right now is that their driving concern is really one of three things. Clients in this age bracket is not necessarily kind of the the I guess the tax, but but it's really the I'm done with moving. I'm done with living in California. I would say that's the the less common one, but there are some people who just want to get out of California. And I want to live closer to kids or live close to a, a vacation home. So from a modeling standpoint, it's obviously going to affect the inputs that we put in for our, our financial planning. Uh, I guess the way I would characterize it is I don't see clients making decisions or talking to us yet about making decisions based on Prop 19 passing. But uh, I'm happy to discuss that more. I think that's just kind of 
right now, um, that's that's what's going on right now. But it, it, things will change, especially as clients are considering, you know, moving in the same, you know, in the same jurisdiction versus out of jurisdictions. There's nuance to it, but I think it's a great question. Great answer. All right, Brian. Great. No, thank you. All great questions. Um, and, and again, please, if you have any follow up, obviously, if you have uh, a client in mind that you'd like to talk about, would love to talk about it. But also, if you just have general questions, want to get more granular, please reach out to me. Um, happy to answer. And we will questions. definitely send out Adam and Alex's uh, contact information because they are great assets to have uh, for your clients. Great. Thanks, sir. Uh, and so I just wanted to talk about a last last client story for today, last client success story, and just kind of, again, tying it back to uh, how as agents this could be valuable for your business. Last client are going to be that kind of older clients. Um, so Peter and Marlene are 76 and 77. Again, we're looking at that kind of older bracket, the 70 plus people that have already been uh, retired for a while and they've built wealth over time, right? Maybe they bought a fourplex a while ago, they bought a residential property, they've invested in commercial property, they've built up those assets over time. And what I found from working with these clients is these are not usually people who receive some sort of big tech payout or something like that, right? These are often people that think of themselves as middle class, they've lived middle class, they've built wealth over time. And so the idea that things like estate tax might affect them are totally foreign until you start looking at the balance sheet and you go, okay, well, how much is this fourplex worth now? How much is your primary residence worth now? And all of a sudden, someone who's thought of themselves as middle class goes, oh man, I really might need to make some of these you know, decisions going forward, right? I, I actually might be subject to estate tax and this is something I should think about. And so again, what are you gonna identify these clients? These are gonna be older clients, probably ones who want to kind of give away the level of management, right? They're maybe not necessarily, maybe they've been managing their whole lives and they wanna step away a little bit, but they've got a basis of zero on the property and the idea of selling it is just crazy. You know, they've owned it since 1980, it's completely depreciated and they're never going to sell it without some sort of strategy in place. But you do definitely wanna do something where you go, okay, I need to take a step back. I'm almost 80 and I need a little bit of a break. So obviously the first thing is you're gonna be talking about 1031 exchanges, right? If we're concerned about basis, but that doesn't really do much to help us with the estate tax planning considerations. And actually I got a call from this client the other day too, which is another question we've started to get from clients is uh, pick up the phone. He goes, Adam, do you know Biden's talking about getting rid of the estate tax, you know, lowering the estate tax and there's going to be higher capital gains and the step up in basis. And I said, yeah, I have read that and we're not going to freak out about that yet. And political views completely aside, we have started to get that question from clients as well is, you know, especially on real estate tra transactions is, do I need to start planning proactively? Do I need to start thinking about these sorts of things, how they might affect my estate? And so those sorts of concerns are starting to, you know, kind of come into place for people. Obviously, we talked about nothing's changing right now in terms of any sort of tax law, and that would be a little while down the road. But the biggest question we're getting from clients is how should I prepare proactively? And this is when we really get into the nuts and bolts of estate planning. Like I said, these are clients who want to step away, have several properties, think of themselves as kind of more of a middle class. But what they need are the specialized toolkit of estate planning. This is going well beyond your living trust. These are when you get into all the acronyms, right? You may have heard before FLP, CRT, DAF. The kind of acronyms that you hear floated around, maybe you're familiar with some of them, but this is really the point at which, you know, if you think of the, the living trust kind of package as the, the screwdriver or the multi-tool of estate planning, this is really when we're getting into the specialized tools. There's no one size fits all solution. It's going to entirely depend on the client's situation in terms of taxes, what they want to do. Do they have charitable goals? Do they want to pass along to beneficiaries? And very rarely is it just one strategy. It's going to be a combination of strategies that's really tailored to the client situation. And so in this specific situation, I'll touch on it at a high level, the thing that made sense for the client, independent of any changes to the tax law, because what we were really worried about is they were already over the estate tax exemption and we had to start planning for right now, was putting 
uh, you know, part of the property, one of the properties into a charitable remainder trust. And again, just at a high level, a charitable remainder trust is going to pay generally yourself or another beneficiary income for a period of time. After that period of time, often when you pass away or the second death, property is going to go to a charitable beneficiary. There are a lot of benefits, including the fact that it was able to sell that property within the charitable trust. All those assets go to the charitable beneficiary, but they still receive a stream of income over their lifetime. Happy to go more into detail, but I don't want to get into the nuances of charitable. There's a million different things. Some of them are better in different interest rate environments. The point I'm trying to impress is there really is no one size fits all solution. And then we, you know, we want to pass along assets to beneficiaries. So we also set up a family limited partnership or FLP for uh, one of the other commercial properties. And what that allowed uh, them to do was to be able to gift partnership units to their children at a discounted value and be able to take advantage of their gift tax exemption on an annual basis. So again, this is, you know, there's a little bit more that went into this, but I think the point is there's correct structures and each is really dependent on the client. One thing that often uh, is, is important is charitable trust can't have uh, leverage on the property itself. So again, that's a solution that's gonna make sense for you know your property that has no debt on it. It's not gonna make sense for a highly leveraged property. That's just another example of those things that you want to really you know understand. And again, how does this help you as an agent? These are the sort of clients who again, their plan is to get the step up in basis, give it to kids, hopefully not pay estate taxes. The chance of them selling a property, they may have done 1031 exchanges in the past. They may be a long time client, but they're probably getting to the point where they say, hey, maybe I'm not selling as much. I want to step back. These are structures that allow them to reduce their exposure over time from the amount of work they have to do. Maybe they want to reduce some of their portfolio and get the estate tax benefits. But there's no way right now where they currently are and with the knowledge that they have that they're going to be able to make any of those transactions until they get some sort of step up in basis. And so that's really what's going to help push that sale along now versus five years. I don't want to imply that any of us are morbid enough that we're waiting for anybody to die. But I do think if you can provide that value of helping that client plan and be able to listen to their needs. Again, I'm 80, my knees hurt. I don't want to be, you know, uh, kneeling down and fixing a toilet at, you know, on my Saturday, that's totally fine. Let's help you find a way to take care of that now, as opposed to saying it's just going to struggle through until, until later in life. So uh, again, those three cases, uh, Brian, I'll turn it back over to you or Derek, if anyone has any questions, happy to, to go deeper into that. Actually, Adam, you, can Adam. I just, uh, can I just punctuate a, a point? So first and foremost, Adam, Thanks. appreciate it. Thank you very much for uh, for bringing those to life. Hopefully you all agree with me. This guy uh, knows his stuff and can go as deep as uh, you want to go into tax law and estate law. So, so bring on the scenarios, bring on the questions, and we're absolutely happy to help you with your clients. Uh, I hope that the stories that we told today or that Adam told today painted a picture of the kinds of work that we're doing in three very different cases. I did just want to share one quick other scenario, and I'm going to make it very, very quick, but it's the most common one that, that we get. And it's really, it doesn't have anything to do with estate planning, so it's a little bit out of scope for today's conversation, but it very much has to do with tax planning. And the reason I want to share this story is because I say over and over when we're on these calls that what we're doing is building context for these decisions that your clients are making, and we're helping them see the bigger picture around a massive financial decision that they're considering. But that may be a little bit vague for some of you who haven't actually experienced it. So I think the easiest way to, to give an example of that is let's just say it's a, a client of yours who's considering selling their home, but they're stuck with taxes. They can't get their head around the taxes. They bought their, I'm gonna use nice round numbers. They bought their home for a million bucks. They own it outright. It's worth 2 million today married couple filing jointly for taxes. So million dollar cost basis, million dollar worth of gains, $500,000 exclusion. So now they have a $500,000 tax liability. Call it a third of that would be their, their tax bill. So again, nice round numbers, 175 grand. Without context, 
your clients are going to look at that $175,000 number and say, I don't want to pay $175,000 in taxes. I'm just going to stay in this house. Or is there some way around it? And in most cases, the answer to that is generally no, there isn't a way around it unless you want to convert your property into a rental property and then 1031 exchange it and kind of go through that whole rigmarole, which most people candidly don't want to do. So when I take the step back and we talk about context, what we can actually show people is if you sell your home and you pay this tax bill, which by the way is not the end of the world because you have a highly appreciated asset, you've done very well in your home, life still will work out. We can show them that there's a path to financial success, even if they write that check to the government and pay the taxes, which no one wants to do. And obviously we're gonna look for ways to minim minimize that as much as possible. But the context is what allows people to say, okay, maybe I'm not stuck here. Maybe even if I do write this check and move on with my life and get myself into a living environment that is more appropriate for the lifestyle that I want, I can still be happy. I still have plenty of money to take care of myself through my retirement, have money to leave to my kids, and, and ultimately see that things will still work out. So again, I, I wanted to share that story because it's the most common. It's at least half of the 34 that came my way last quarter were exactly, you know, some variation on that theme. And it's the contextualization of that tax bill that ultimately allows people to make a decision and then commit to a, a, a direction moving forward. So just wanted to share that one. But um, again, Adam, thank you for, for all the, the work you did sharing today. And uh, Brian and Derek, thanks for having us. Yeah, that was great, uh, Alex. I appreciate that. That's another another way to look at this and, and help our agents understand. Uh, and, and, and that one that one that you just described where they're gonna pay a big tax bill and it can be overwhelming if they're looking at just the tax bill, but if they look at after the tax bill and what, you know, what they can do going forward, it, it might help them move. I think that the tax law that's going to allow them to move their tax base to the next property is going to be a, a wave coming after the COVID-19 uh, is, is uh, you know, is fixed, if you will, if we, when we get a vaccine or whatever ends this thing, um, I think the uh, that group of people with that that uh, I think it's Prop 19 tax law changing. I think you're going to see a huge wave of people exiting to uh, to a beach house or to uh, somewhere warmer or somewhere more uh, prone to their their retirement living. So um, I think we should get ready for that and we should start to uh, to plan for that as agents. Um, gentlemen, thank you very much. Appreciate your time on the today's call. Adam, great job. Uh, Alex, great job. I'm going to move now to uh, American Home Shield. We have a strategic partnership with American Home Shield. And uh, Ivo Georgief is, I think, how we say his or her name. <laughs> um, and uh, Ivo, are you uh, out there? Are you ready to jump on and share a few minutes about your product? And then we're going to get into uh, a market analytics with uh, with uh, Robert Cruz. Brian, I'm not seeing Evo on the call. Not okay. The well, then, uh, so. I, I know we had Robert uh, teed up and Robert ready. is here. Okay, well, I would imagine he would be. Robert, uh, thanks for joining our call. And uh, please, uh, hopefully uh, we can see your screen. Somebody can see it <laughs> because I, I, I can't access the video or share right now. Can you try it again, uh, Robert? I. I changed everything for you so let okay. me try again I've, I've been trying several times uh, all right try now <laughs> zoom is not playing nice today not. <laughs> all right now it's not popping up this is a nightmare <laughs> yeah all right there we go oh there it is there we go uh, so see if i can share i can't share uh, <laughs> Up, here it comes. Yeah, I, I've, I've run many of office meeting with uh, worse, worse scenarios, so I can wing it. I'm an expert. Um, we can see your screen now. Oh, but I don't, I can't see it. It's weird. <laughs> I, can't, I don't know what I'm sharing with you. Oh, I would, I would try going off of uh, Zoom and actually minimize your Zoom screen and, and go straight to your PowerPoint. All right, uh, walk me through it. I'm bringing it up. Can you see it? 
We had uh, it here just a second ago whenever you shared. Okay. Yeah, I, I've been, I've had this problem and, and the way I got around it is I just, uh, I got myself off camera and I just, I just did the sharing component. There, there you go, Robert. It's coming. All there right. you go. All right. Okay. So let's, let's go. Uh, great just presentation uh, by, by Alex and Adam. Real, real good information. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to tie in uh, some information for you on what the market is doing and what it's going to do. What I really want to emphasize is- Robert, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but um, do the uh, PowerPoint Prezo, the, uh, click on the on the little presentation button, or yeah, there you go, that one too, that one works. There you go, perfect. Okay. All right, so uh, I wrote this down and it, said, and it said, if you look closely enough, you will see what you want to see. And, and what I mean by that is uh, you're getting a ton of information, you're getting a ton of knowledge, um, but a lot of it is tied to where you're at, right? I'm gonna show you some numbers um, of where our market has been uh, recently and then going backwards and looking forward. And what you're gonna do next year and, and this fourth quarter is really tied into where, where, is, where are you emotionally, where are you set up to do business because the market is gonna be awesome, right? I've been telling you that for a while. Uh, Earlier, Brian, you said, I'm gonna share what September and October are doing. Well, September and October are doing what we told you it was gonna do in two or three months ago. That's the beauty of when you understand the data and you're really digging in and really paying attention. Um, but it doesn't matter if you're not on top of it and you're not actually doing the things, right? So I wanna start with this. There's, there's no better data point or trend that I can share with you today based on what Alex and Adam shared and what, the, what some of you continues to bring to the table, as long as you understand this, there's no more powerful force in real estate than demographics. And for the last 50 plus years, we have ridden an incredible wave of uh, baby boomers uh, buying real estate and then transacting over and over and over. Uh, as Adam said, not to be morbid, that party, <laughs> Is coming to an end. But what that means is we have a second, even bigger demographic wave of millennials that is going to overtake uh, that boomer wave. And it's going to intermingle. No bigger class of real estate owners than the boomer generation. Uh, and they will be replaced by the millennial generation. We are only entering that period of interchange where the millennial group overtakes the bo uh, boomer generation in home ownership, home transfer and transfer of wealth, right? So uh, Adam did a great job. I consider myself a pretty intelligent individual. I didn't understand everything he said. What I do know is I know who to call when I'm out there prospecting and looking for the next five, 10 years of my business when I encounter these two intersecting demographic waves. You don't have to be an expert on transfer taxes and all the other things because we have the experts. Uh, what we need to do is understand that is coming, that is gonna be an integral part of our business and you have the dedicated partner that can answer those tough questions, right? Um, so let me tell you what I'm talking about. September has been great. October is shaping out to be a fantastic month. We're gonna have a great November, December, January, February, March. I've been telling you that. We'll continue every other week to give you data points that are actionable. What do I mean by actionable? That means you come in, you listen to Intero now, we'll give you some information that'll help you help more clients or make more money, however you're wired and whatever motivates you, right? So uh, look, look in a little bit, big picture. What can we expect for the fourth quarter into next year? This is from Zillow, their outlook. Sales are expected to stay high, but taper through 2021. Here, they're setting February of 2020 as the benchmark. We know what has happened and we know what we're experiencing now. That's gonna to continue to go into end of year. Uh, this shows decline if you just look at it visually, but it's still better than it was March, 2020. And this has been a great year. We're not gonna to continue to go up, up, up higher in sales 21, but understand this means a really robust market. Be prepared for it, right? Uh, how home price uh, outlook, again, 
starting uh, late 2019 through the pandemic, through the shutdown and into 2022, prices are going to rise. You know what that means. Continued low interest rates, continued scarcity of inventory and buyers aggressively looking into the market, right? So that should be a lot of information for you in your setup, in prospecting, in going out looking and advising clients. Uh, great market to do it. You're going to run into more and more people that need the advice that Adam was just giving. So make sure you have their number, you make sure you have their contacts and put an aggressive plan in to go out, find these people and help them. These are two big things. Now, that's not telling you anything new. By now, everybody's got to convince when I tell you the market's going to be great. But think for a second, if you've been watching and paying attention, Daniel started this meeting by talking about go out and look at condo townhomes. Those you've been watching for months now, we've been telling you, even though the, the, the data was telling us that condo townhomes were slowing, I was telling you, double down, go get them. Those of you here in Cupertino, I've been telling you every Tuesday morning, go get more condo townhome listings. We'll recover. We knew the data, we knew the leading indicators, and we knew where to go next. So think about that for a second. We are telling you the market is going to continue to ride high, ride hot for the next six months for sure, probably through 2021. Is your business set up to take advantage of it? Right now, these are these are prognostications, these are guesses, educated as they are. But here's what I really want you to focus on right now. Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. The market's going to do what the market does. Are you prepared to succeed no matter what? Right. And here's what I want, the kind of focus I want you to have when we're talking data analytics, when we're talking about guessing or talking about what's going to happen next. This is Santa Clara County activity for the last nine months, starting January. When you look at it, this kind of close view, when something then unexpected happens, you can easily see what happened. You can easily see something big happened, even if you were asleep the whole time uh, in uh, March, April but we've rebounded. And now this is the trajectory we're on and we're gonna stay on, right? We could not have guessed that this was gonna happen, but if you had a good business plan, if you had, if you were doing all the things necessary, you took a punch, but you recovered and you've done really, really well uh, in the last six, seven months. If you weren't ready, you struggled. Overall, as a company, we've done really, really well because enough of you were prepared and ready. That's the focus I want you to have through the fall 2020 into 2021, we'll, get, we'll give you the information you need. Do you have the business set up to take advantage? You go back 18 months and that kind of blip kind of starts disappearing into the analytics to our market is strong, right? You go back five years, completely disappears. This is what data looks like when you're organized, when you're planning, when you're executing at a high level. The lows will, will, will affect you, but it won't break you. The highs you'll ride and ride around through. Now, go back 15 years, and uh, this is what a bad market looks like if you weren't there. If you were there, what I'm telling you really, really should hit home. Prepare your business, be strong. We're in October, get your business planning ready. Listen to these programs, listen to the experts Brian brings on to execute at a high level in your business. Um, you will know first, you will know more than your competitors, but it's up to you to execute. And, and, and this is what I wanna finish with today. If you were just listening to the news out there, if you were just look, listening to what uh, the external news sources tell you, they were telling you urban markets are dead, right? And we were telling here in Ontario now, they are not. Why? Because look at the rest of the US, West, Midwest, and South, urban markets outperforming suburban markets. But in the Northeast, where our media, world media headquarters are located, that story was true. So this is why understanding local data, real-time data, and then executing on it is so important. We've been hearing for the last several months the cities are dead, everybody's leaving, right? Why would you hear that? Well, because when we look at most major markets, it wasn't true. Those 
cities were doing fine. They took the hit, they bounced back everywhere except San Francisco, right? But you're not going to hear the news that everybody's okay. You're going to read the sexy story. But if you're paying attention to the local, if you're paying attention to the relevant data for our markets, you can ignore the noise and uh, really do well for yourself. Uh, last thing, two last points. There are big mega trends that we need to understand. Uh, we'll go back to micro data in future months, but understand these big things. Real estate works in cycles. This is uh, from American Enterprise Institute going back to 1976. These are boom periods. These are bust, boom, bust, boom, bust, boom. And look what I, I want to show you this. The last period, you can see the boom periods are getting longer and longer, right? We used to say seven to 10 year cycles of boom. Look at this, 39 quarters. We're only in quarter 29 right now of this latest boom cycle. We've got a lot left to go in this boom cycle, right? You don't control that. You're not gonna be able to read or react and forecast when does the market turn. Build a business, look, watch the local data, look at news like this, partner with people like Summit Tree, and you're gonna do really, really well. Uh, and then again, this is the last one. This is the most important thing for today. There's no bigger data point in real estate than this transfer of real estate wealth and just general wealth from millennials, from the boomer generation to millennials. Nothing that we focus on in the short term will overpower this. No 15 month or five month window and what real estate in their ups and downs does will overpower this. Uh, and so you just got real insight on how you can build a really solid leg to your business for the next five to 10 years based on what Alex and Adam just shared with you. The transfer of real estate and overall wealth from this generation to this generation. So uh, next, in two weeks, we'll get back to the micro data, these pointers on, hey, look, here's what's happening in this zone. But because I knew they were talking today and I knew they were gonna be talking about this specific uh, demographic trend and real estate opportunity, I wanted to finish with that. When you look at data, you can look too close, you can look too fine and miss the entire opportunity. When you start to pull back, you see there are longer trends, more sustainable trends, and this is the biggest one. Uh, write down their number, really take, go watch uh, the recording of what Adam was talking about, uh, but really fine tune your business and look for the foreseeable future. This has to be a large leg of your business going forward. And that's all I got for you today. That's great, Robert. Thank you very much. I love the uh, love the 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 way that you did the the uh, market the uh, graphs where you went historically back. That that uh, that really puts it in perspective. Great uh, great graph, really. Um, so it feels like we just came through the craziest time in the world, but it's uh, it we just kind of experienced a, a typical November December basically. Exactly, it's all relative. <laughs> yeah, um, great job. Uh, Robert, that's exactly what we were looking for. I look forward to seeing you on our next uh, on our next episode. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us here today. I hope you uh, you got some great value out of this, as I know I did, and I'm hoping that you can share that with your uh, with your people moving forward. Great job on the show all the way around. Thanks for all of our guests and Derek. Thanks for battling through the the uh, the Zoom issues. Uh, I also want to give special thanks to Priscilla who is doing a great job helping me uh, coordinate the guest speakers and getting everybody here. Uh, so I uh, look forward to seeing everybody next time. Thank you very much. Go out and sell something, okay? Make it a great day, everybody. Have a great week too. Hi, everyone. See you, Robert. See you, Brian. Thank you, Derek.